Hello everyone, and welcome to Psycho 381 Principles of Learning. I'm your instructor, Dr. Kimberly Campbell, and today's video is going to be a stand-in for the standard first day of class lecture. So I'm going to go through a bit of my own background, who I am, and why I'm here teaching this class, and then we're going to hop over and talk about the syllabus so that you can get a feel for how this course is going to be structured and what you can expect for the rest of the semester. Now that I've established myself as a real, living, breathing human being and not just some disembodied voice um, on top of the video, let's hop over to the PowerPoint slides. And as promised, the first part of this video is going to be all about getting to know your instructor, which is me. So like I said, um, I am Dr. Kimberly Campbell. You can call me Dr. Campbell or I'm okay with just Kimberly. Um, I'm fairly new to having that degree, so I'm not super attached to the title as of yet. Um, before I launch into my academic background, I always like to explain why I cover this. Um, when you're learning about science and when you're going through these courses, we always try and stress that it's important to be critical of your sources. Where's this information coming from? And I am, even as an instructor, then a source. So who am I to sit here and tell you about all of these science things? So when I'm giving you my academic background, I'm not just showing off my list of degrees. I'm actually telling you why I'm a credible reference, why I'm a credible source to be sharing this information with you, even if most of it is coming from a textbook. So with that little caveat out of the way, the basic summary of my academic background is that I got my Bachelor of Science from Dalhousie University. That's in Halifax, Nova Scotia, for those not familiar with the institution. Um, I did that back in 2013. And it's interesting to note that my BSc actually wasn't in psychology. I started off in physics, realized I was not fantastic at mathematics, and uh, swapped over to bio. So I'm actually a bio major. Um, and I'll talk about some of the research I've done in that biology field in just a moment here. Um, but continuing with academics, um, I got my Master's of Science here at the University of Alberta in 2015. Um, I did that with the Songbird Neuroethology Lab on campus. So if you're familiar with Dr. Sturdy in the department, I worked with him for my Master's and I continued on to get my Doctor of Philosophy, my PhD, still at the University of Alberta. So I got that in 2019. So like I said, fairly recently. <clears throat> Now, a new addition that I've been including with this whole switch to online thing is a little bit about me as a person. I find it's a little bit challenging, I guess, to get a feel for people um, when we're doing this online thing. It is, as I said, very easy for me to come across as just this disembodied voice that you hear. Um, but I am in fact a person. So a little bit about me outside of academia, I am an avid bird lover. Um, I have two pet birds. I have studied birds. I love birds. So I try to keep the bird examples to a minimum, but they will pop up fairly often as I teach. I am a chocolate fanatic. That is one of my favorite things to eat, even if it isn't very healthy. I like to think of myself as an amateur photographer, sort of an easier way to have an artistic output. Um, I used to do drawing and painting, but that takes up far more time than I can afford, especially when I was a grad student. Um, I have been obsessed with the Pokemon game since I was younger, and I continue to play those to this day. Um, and finally, I am a collector of hobbies. So whenever I have free time, I like to pick up random hobbies. So I sew, I knit, I crochet, I cross stitch, I've tried sculpture, all sorts of different things. I like to try different activities and see what I enjoy. So that's me outside of academia. Again, just to give you a feel for who it is that you're listening to. But hopping back to some of the more, I guess, relevant information. Um, as promised, I'm going to give you a bit of my research background. 
So like I said, when I was an undergraduate, I was in biology and I was focusing a lot on genetics and evolution. So my research as an honors student in an undergraduate lab, um, I ended up doing a lot of sequencing of DNA and I was trying to identify uh, different species of single celled organisms in soil samples, which is just as exciting as it sounds. So I'm very familiar with things like PCR and uh, designing primers and evaluating the outcomes of gels that you've run your PCR on and all of that thrilling stuff if you've ever taken a uh, molecular bio course. From there, I actually turned in a pretty abrupt uh, different direction and switched over to psychology. Again, because of my love of birds, so I ended up studying learning and, and communication in black cap chickadees. So I've done things like operant conditioning experiments to figure out what chickadees think of different sounds. How do they categorize sounds? I've done bioacoustic investigations of their vocalizations. So seeing how different types of vocalizations differ structurally um, and stuff like that. So some of my expertise will kind of shine through throughout this course because there's quite a bit of overlap with different topics in the class and stuff that I've actually done hands-on, which is kind of cool and hopefully helpful for you guys as well. Um, and one more picture of birds. Uh, another thing I've included with this switch to online learning is, as I mentioned, I have two pet birds. Um, I lovingly call them my research assistants. I have Link on the left and Sheik on the right, um, Green Cheek Conure and Sun Conure, respectively. Um, and this isn't just an excuse to share cute bird photos, though we can always use more cute, cute bird photos. Um, I just want to give everyone a heads up that I have these guys and I work from home, so sometimes they will make appearances in the videos despite my best efforts. So if you hear stuff in the background, sometimes it's these guys. I just like to let people know in case you're wondering, what the heck is that weird sound? It's usually birds. Um, so it's just one of the limitations or maybe bonuses of working from home. And then the last part about me as an instructor is I want to talk a little bit about my teaching philosophy. Um, and this is one of those sections that as a student, I never understood why instructors would include this. But now that I'm sort of getting a feel for being an instructor myself, and as I'm getting comfortable talking to students, I feel really strongly about telling you why I teach the way that I teach. Um, I feel like it's going to be a lot more informative and you're going to know where I'm coming from if I actually tell you why I'm doing stuff the way I'm doing it. So that's what this section is. Um, the first is a big disclaimer that online learning is still fairly new and it's very different from everything that we're used to. So I am aware that as students, this is not what you were expecting to be doing in university. This is very different and very far from what we were expecting to be in a classroom and to have that kind of personal interaction. Um, and as an instructor, this is a lot different than what I'm used to. I'm used to standing in front of a room and talking to students and seeing your faces to know if the information is hitting just right. But instead, I'm sitting at my computer desk by myself. So everything is very different. And I am aware and expecting there to be quite a learning curve. With every class that I'm running, I'm learning new things and I'm adapting to online learning. And hopefully by now I've kind of ironed out the uh, potential issues, but stuff may go wrong and we're just gonna have to be adaptive. So I'm going to be aware that you guys are adapting to something new and I just hope that you can be aware that I'm adapting as well. My next point is the idea that material should be accessible. So you may have noticed by now that I have possibly the most boring slides on the history of slides. And this isn't just because I'm lazy. This is actually because in one of the first classes that I taught, I had a student who was colorblind and they had pointed out that a lot of the figures and uh, slides that are included with textbooks aren't colorblind friendly. And since then, I've encountered students with other kinds of learning disabilities or even just preferences. 
And I've found that having nice clean slides, white with black text, um, having figures that aren't going to be impossible for people with different kinds of visual disabilities to see, um, just sort of making stuff visible and accessible to as many people as possible. So yes, my slides are very boring, but they're boring for a reason. So hopefully you can forgive that. Um, and you'll notice that as we go through a lot of my slide or a lot of my figures, have been adjusted for high contrast or things like that. And that's the same reason to make them accessible. Um, on that note, if there's anything that you think of that could help make these slides or make my materials more accessible, I would love to hear that because I'm very new to this teaching thing. I've only been doing this for a couple of years. So I'm always open to new ways and better ways to set things up because I'm here to teach you guys and I want to make sure it's available to you. Um, and on that note of making things available, my last philosophy or my last idea around teaching is that I want you guys to make use of as many resources as possible. I'm going to make lots of stuff available um, and it's up to you to come and make use of that. So um, come to our weekly office hours or weekly Zoom classes where you can chat with myself and other students, ask questions, talk about cool topics from the class, or even talk about science in general. Um, you don't have to attend and we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but if you are um, sort of free and want to come by, it's a great resource. Um, I also share videos and extra links. I make a point to tell you that things are just for interest sake, um, but I like to include extra stuff because seeing other examples and extra videos and different perspectives really helps you learn material better. Um, and our last resource is your instructor and your TA. So don't hesitate to reach out to either myself or our TA Connor, send us an email, set up office hours, or set up uh, meetings outside of office hours or come to those office hours, um, but make use of us. We're a resource and we're here to help you. So that is my teaching philosophy in a nutshell. The next section is all about introducing you to the course. So effectively, I'm going to be hitting some of the high points from the syllabus. That doesn't mean that you can get away with not reading the syllabus. Please make sure that you at least flip through the document. At this point in your academic careers, you have for sure seen multiple syllabi, but it's always a good idea to take a look at it. That document is going to be effectively our contract for the course. So that's where you're going to go to look for things like uh, due dates or deadlines or um, extra information about where you can find things or stuff like that. So it's a pretty good resource. Make sure you have it handy. Um, and you can find that syllabus on eClass. So if you need a copy, you can go download it there. But I'm going to hit sort of the important points of that here. So I just mentioned that you can find the syllabus on eClass. And in fact, eClass is going to be our main source of information for the course. That's going to be the central hub where you can find everything else that you're going to need for this class. Um, and if it isn't located directly on eClass, it's going to be linked through eClass. So that's where you can go to find general information, um, things like the syllabus, our announcements, and the frequently asked questions section. So as I get emails, if I see multiple students asking the same question, I'll add that question to our frequently asked questions section so that everybody can know the answer. Um, the announcements for the course, I'm going to talk about uh, sort of upcoming dates or information that I think that you should need. Um, those announcements will show up on eClass, but they will also send a copy to your U of A email. So make sure that you're checking that email address. Um, on eClass, you're all going also. Ooh. On eClass, you're also going to find resources for all of our course assessments. Things like uh, practice questions for exams or information about assignments. All of that's going to be on eClass organized, hopefully, in some pretty logical different sections. Um, eClass is also going to include links to our examinations, and I'll talk about our exams in just a couple of minutes. 
Um, eClass is also where you can find our lecture videos and slides. Uh, it seems kind of weird to state that here because you would have had to find this video on eClass to watch it right now, but that's where all of our lecture videos and slides are going to be posted. On the topic of lectures, our lectures for this class are going to be asynchronous, meaning that I'm going to pre-record our lectures and then make them available to you in time for you to watch them during a lecture, if you so desire, or at any other time of day. Um, so I'm going to post lectures on YouTube and link them on eClass, so you can either um, go in and bookmark our YouTube channel so that you can see videos all together there, or you can click on eClass for the individual links each week for different chapters um, and watch the videos that way. Both are going to bring you to the same place. Um, and my intent is to post them each day in time for whatever class I would standard have been lecturing in. Um, so for example, I would post uh, a lecture in time for Tuesday at 2 p.m. Um, sometimes they'll go up a little bit earlier. If I have them recorded earlier, I'll just post them so that you have them. Um, but my sort of self-imposed goal is that I would have them up by the either Tuesday or Thursday in which you should be watching them if we were keeping up with sort of our normal schedule in class. Um, I'm also going to be posting our slides on eClass that go along with those lectures, um, and I post those as PowerPoint and PDF files. I find some students prefer one format and some the other, so I'm just making both available to everyone. Now, because the lectures are pre-recorded, I always worry that students can very easily start feeling isolated. This online learning thing doesn't give us as much interaction as what we would usually get in a classroom. So to try and combat that, I've set up live Zoom meetings that are optional for attendance, so you don't have to come during this window. But if you're like me and you really miss that interactive nature of class, then you can come by during our normally scheduled class time on Tuesdays, so starting at 2 p.m., um, and you can ask questions, you can discuss course topics, or we can just chat about science in general. Um, sort of a very informal, open format where we can have these discussions and I can be available to you, and you can also get to know fellow students if other people want to talk about uh, different topics while we're there. Um, so you can find the link to those Zoom meetings on eClass under the Live Meetings section. And like I said, attendance is not mandatory, it's just there as another resource that you can make use of if you so desire. And I put in that there's a 15 minute minimum because sometimes there aren't going to be lots of questions. So I don't want to block off a whole hour for effectively office hours if we're going to get through everything we want to talk about in 10 or 15 minutes. So I've said that no matter what, I'll stick around for at least 15 minutes because sometimes people can't make it right at the beginning of the meeting. Um, so give a little bit of leeway for people to come in late if they're going to have questions. And then after that 15 minute window, if nobody has any more questions or maybe if nobody's shown up, then I can go and not have to spend a whole hour sitting in an empty Zoom meeting, which has absolutely happened in the past, but that's why I use this rule now. All right, so enough on the format of how lecture content is being delivered and how we can meet. Um, let's talk about the course itself. So here I have the course description straight out of the course catalog. And it says that we're going to be looking at principles and processes of learning, including a consideration of classical conditioning, instrumental learning, and memory. Research involving non-human animals will be emphasized. Um, so that's pretty concise and to the point. Also includes our prerequisites, some statistics classes, one of those, um, and also having Psych 281 or 282. Um, but if we want to break down our specific goals in terms of what we're going to learn from this course, I've put that on its own slide because our course description isn't super helpful on that count. So we're going to be learning about fundamental learning processes, specifically through the lens of empirical research. So we're going to learn about uh, habituation and sensitization, conditioning, discrimination, uh, memory, and different kinds of cognition. 
And just like our course description said, a lot of this is going to be focused on through the lens of non-human animal research. So looking at how other animals think and learn. Um, our main focus in this course is going to be on understanding the mechanisms behind each of these processes. So it's a lot more theory based than the 281 or 282 counterparts that you need to have before you get here. Um, so you should have a background on what all those processes are and kind of how they work. But this term, we're going to get more into the details of the mechanism that's driving those different behaviors. Um, so it'll be a very interesting class with lots of very cool topics. Um, a brief mention of our textbook. This is a picture of the cover just so that you know what you're looking for. And this is the citation here. We are currently using the seventh edition. I've had students ask if they can use previous editions. And the answer is uh, it depends or sort of it's up to you. I have no experience with previous editions, so I haven't read the 6th or 5th editions, so I don't know how much the material differs between editions. So if you choose to buy an older edition, then just be aware that the material might not be exactly the same, um, so use at your own risk. But um, I don't mind if you buy uh, a new, used, uh, digital versus physical copies, whatever works for you. Um, yeah, this is, we're going to be working very heavily out of this textbook. Um, you just sort of make the call if you want a newer or the current version that I'm working from, or if you're comfortable using an older version. Um, I just won't be able to tell you where content matches or not. All right, next we have our outline of topics. This is straight from our syllabus. Um, so this is just a brief outline of what topics we're covering, what chapters correspond to those topics, and when I think we're going to cover them. Um, so at the top, I have my disclaimer that this outline is meant to be a guideline and it may change as things happen. That's just basically saying that online learning, it's very difficult to predict how long stuff takes. Uh, so sometimes things will move around and if anything ends up uh, being a big shift or if there needs to be some kind of big change, I'll make sure that I let you guys know just so that you know if anything's moving. Um, but you'll notice that for our first week here, we're listed as doing our introduction. We're going to cover chapter one. Um, the first week is or the first chapter, I guess, is very brief. Um, it's just sort of a reminder of the stuff that you should already know, giving us a little bit of a groundwork to get started. Um, and because it is such a short chapter, I'm actually going to give us today, the Tuesday class, just to get familiar with the course. So going over this video, familiarizing yourself with the syllabus, and then on Thursday, that's when I'll post this introduction lecture or the chapter one uh, lecture so that you can get started sort of in a couple of days once everything is comfortable and familiar. And then we'll move on to the real chapters, chapter two and onward. Um, we'll have 12 different chapters to cover this semester, um, and those will have a little bit more substance to them. So we'll use both lectures or both lecture periods each week to each week to cover those. Whew. Words are hard today. All right, for our grade evaluation, this is just our grade breakdown of how you're going to be marked for the semester. Um, and it is a pretty standard breakdown. We have two midterms and a final, as well as two assignments and a bunch of chapter quizzes. So we're going to look at each of these individually. For our written assignments, we have two written assignments but they're actually very, very similar. So the first one is really just meant to be an introduction to this kind of a process. Um, and then the second one is gonna be do it again, but with a little bit more freedom. But I'll walk us through that a little bit more right here. Um, you can also find a full breakdown of this process on eClass in the assignments section. So I've put up a document there so that you can see the grading rubric as well as more details than this. But um, yeah, lots more information on eClass, as I've said. 
For assignment number one, you're going to be choosing from a list of empirical articles. So I have three different primary sources, um, three different experiments. You choose whichever one you like the most, and you're going to be writing a two-page double-spaced summary of one of those articles. So read an article and summarize it in two pages for me. In that summary, you're going to focus on describing the research background. So why were they doing this experiment? Uh, what info do we need to understand that experiment? Then focus in on their results, the conclusions, and the broader implications of the study. So a big wrapping up, what does it all mean kind of statement. And you'll notice here there's no mention of the methods. And that's because in this case, unless you are making connections between methods of different uh, experiments in sort of our conclusion wrap up part at the bottom up, um, the, the methods aren't really that important. So I'm not asking you to summarize the methods unless they're relevant for some point that you're making. So don't spend tons of time on them because um, you're not getting graded for including methods. What I care about is the background, the results, the conclusions, and what we take home from it. And then at the end, or I guess wherever you choose to incorporate it, you should make some kind of statement about how this research connects to our class material and give some kind of critical evaluation of the article as a whole. Was this a good article? Was the experiment conducted soundly? Was there something they could have improved? Just show that you have some kind of critical thinking about this article. So that's the basic setup for that. Um, for assignment two, you're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time you're going to choose your own article. So same format, two page, double spaced, um, summarize the article, answer the same questions, but this time you get to pick an article that's going to relate to one of the topics that we've covered in the course by that point. Um, and so the first assignment is due earlier on, on March 5th. The last assignment is actually due on the last day of class, so April uh, 26th. Um, so that's the last day of class period, not so much our specific class. Um, but the intent here is that you would do assignment one, get feedback on it, and then take that feedback and incorporate it into doing assignment two. That being said, if you're confident in your writing abilities, you could do both right off the bat um, and just have them ready to submit early. But I would highly recommend making use of some feedback to be able to um, do better on the second assignment. All right, so for our chapter quizzes, these are meant to basically keep you on top of the readings, on top of the material as time goes on. Um, and it's also just sort of another way for you to have marks through a process that isn't um, a timed pressure sensitive midterm. So we're going to have 12 quizzes total, one per chapter. And each chapter quiz is going to be released concurrent with the lectures about that chapter. So when I post the lecture uh, slides and video on Thursday for chapter one, I'll also be releasing the chapter one quiz. Um, despite the fact that the uh, quizzes are being released as the chapters are covered, the due date is actually going to be kind of chunking all of the chapters together. So um, they're going to be due by midnight, uh, so 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, on the date of the midterm that's testing those chapters or for the last set of chapters for the last day of class. Um, so our first midterm is on February 9th. So as long as you do the chapter quizzes for the chapters covered in midterm one, so chapters one through four, by midnight on the day of the midterm, then you are under the line on the deadline and that's all good. Um, you can do those chapters or those chapter quizzes early, and in fact, you are encouraged to do them as they're being released. But I want to give students a little bit more flexibility. Um, as I've said, with online learning, I find that having multiple deadlines to keep track of and things to worry about, um, it just becomes really stressful. So by having everything due around the same date, you can choose to do those at your own uh, pace um, as long as you get it done by the midterm date. All right, 
Um, and then that brings us to our examination. So the exams are being worth uh, 20, 20, and 30% respectively, two midterms and a final. The midterms are non-cumulative, which basically means I will only cover untested material on the midterms. So if I hop back here, the first midterm covers chapters one to four. The second midterm covers chapters five to eight. Um, our final exam will be a little bit different, but it gets its own slide in just a second. The format for the midterms is that they're going to be open book tests. With online learning, I find that the more systems that are involved, the more potential for stuff to go wrong. So I don't use proctoring software. Instead, I design the exams to be written in a tight time frame so that you don't have time to look up absolutely every single answer. And I ask questions that require you to think about the material and sort of critically evaluate it. Um, so it's not so much you can just Google a definition and then type that in. Um, you will have to think about it, so you still have to study, um, but you will have access to your notes, which is honestly a little bit more realistic for real life anyways. Um, but the tests are going to be a mixture of short answer and multiple choice questions. Um, I don't know sort of the exact distribution in terms of number of questions, but I'm going to be looking to have about an equal grade distribution where about half the marks for the exam will come from multiple choice questions and about half will come from short answer questions. And that might shift um, as we get towards the midterms, just depending on time and how things are feeling, but that's my intent for right now. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned it, but those are going to be written on E-Class. Um, you can actually see the links to those right now just to get a feel for where they would be and when they're being written. And when they're being written is within our uh, class period. So these are both Tuesdays, February 9th, uh, from the beginning of class until an hour in, 2 to 3 p.m. Again, Mountain Standard Time is Edmonton time. And the second one is March 23rd, another Tuesday, uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. again. So both are 60 minutes long. And our final exam is going to be exactly the same, just longer and cumulative. So I'm going to have more weight on previously untested material. So everything we've covered after the second midterm is going to be more heavily weighted. But I can still ask questions related to earlier topics. Um, same idea, short answer, multiple choice questions, open book, written on E-Class. Um, this time around, the date is to be determined, and that's because the Office of the Registrar sets our final exam dates. So until they let us know when that date is, I don't exactly know when the exam is being held. So keep an eye on Bear Tracks. Um, I'll also make an announcement as soon as they set a solid date. Um, you will see on Bear Tracks a tentative exam date um, a little bit sooner on, but just be aware that that, that is tentative um, and it might change. So final exam date to be determined, um, and I'll let you know when that is. And that is it for today. Like I said, we're going to start with our real lectures for Chapter 1 on Thursday, so I will see you then.